this practical we're going to look at today is chromatography. And chromatography literally means uh, colour writing. And it's a separation technique used to separate materials in a mixture. It's used every day by real chemists in lots and lots of different guises. Chromatography works the same whether you're doing it in the school lab or whether you're doing it in the professional lab. And there are basically two what we call phases, a mobile phase and a stationary phase. And the mixture in the, you know, the components in the mixture separate out depending on how much they like to be either in the stationary phase or the mobile phase. The more they like to be in the mobile phase, the more they move. So we're going to look at chromatography to separate uh, different coloured materials in food colouring. So we're going to start by setting up our stationary phase, which for our chromatography today is going to be paper. So this is a piece of chromatography paper that has already been cut for us. And we need to start by drawing on a baseline and we use pencil for that. It's really important we use pencil because if we use pen, the colours in the pen might leak into the mobile phase and will spoil our separation. So we take a ruler and roughly two centimetres from the base of the paper, we draw a straight line across the bottom. And then onto that, we're going to mark four points where we're going to place four food colourings. We don't want to go too close to the edge because when we get the separation, it doesn't work so well near the edge. So about one centimetre in, we'll put our first cross and then we will evenly place our other crosses going along the baseline like that. So we are now ready to put our colourings onto the baseline. I've got four today. I've got blue, yellow and red. And I know that these are all pure materials. That means they only have one colour dissolved in them. I also have an unknown food colouring, which is green. Um, and we're going to use the chromatography to find out which of these colours are in our unknown. So I'm going to take a very fine glass tube called a capillary tube. And when I place this into the colouring, it will automatically, just because of something called capillary action, suck a little bit of the liquid straight into the tube. So we don't need to use any kind of suction there. And then to place it onto our cross, we just touch it very lightly and let it spread out on the paper. Now, ideally, we need to do that a few times, allowing the colour to dry in between so that we get a nice, strong colour of this yellow food colouring. Now, we don't want our dot to go too big, so we have to be careful not to touch it for too long. And that should be enough for the yellow. So I'm going to repeat that now with the other colours. So the next one I'm going to do is blue. This is another one of my pure colours. Again, just sucks a little bit up. Oh, <laughs> almost. Uh, just sucks a little bit up into the capillary tube. And now I'm going to touch that onto my second cross, just to give a little dot and repeat. And again, I don't want it to go too big. I certainly don't want it to start to merge with the yellow dot next to it. That should be enough. Thirdly, with my red, which is my final pure colour. Notice I'm using a different capillary tube each time so that I don't cross-contaminate my colours. Put some red onto my third one. Touch. Ooh, a little bit bigger that time. OK, so with the red, again, I need to make sure it doesn't merge into my um, blue dot. And ideally, we would definitely need these to dry in between the applications of the dots. And last of all, I'm going to put my unknown colouring. This is green, so we can probably guess what colours are in it. But we will take this as our unknown, dot it onto the final cross. Again, just do it once, twice, and then three times, just to make sure we get plenty of the food dye on there. OK, so as I said, this is the stationary phase. So the dots are on the stationary phase. I don't want to get ink further up, so I'll just wipe my hands. Um, 
And I'm now going to introduce them to the mobile phase. The mobile phase is going to move, obviously. And this is going to be water. And the water is going to be put at the just very bottom of the paper and will be drawn up again by capillary action up through the chromatography paper. And as it does so, the colours in the food dye are going to either want to dissolve into the water and move with it or stay on the paper. And it's their sort of relative affinities for either moving with the water or staying on the paper that makes them separate out. So I'm going to put the water into the beaker. Now I've got to be really careful. I do not want my water deeper than my dots. Otherwise they'll just wash off. So just using a squeezy bottle, I'll just put some into the bottom of the beaker and I'll make sure I'm not putting it any deeper than my dots. And then to make my paper stand up, I'm going to attach it onto a glass rod at the top. And then I can suspend it at the top of the beaker. And we're ready to go. So I just stand my paper into the top of my beaker and now just the very bottom edge you'll see the water level starting to rise up the paper and as it does so it will take the colours with it and we're going to leave it now for a few minutes until the water level has risen to within a couple of centimetres of the top of the paper. So we have left the chromatography in the solvent for about 15 minutes and the water has made its way up the paper and you'll see I've also put another pencil line now near the top of the paper and this is the distance that the water travelled. Um, I've taken it out, I've let it dry and now we can look at the three known food dye colours and compare it to our unknown. Now straight away you can see that our unknown is very, very clearly showing that it contains the yellow because just by the visual inspection you can see that you've got that similar pattern there of the yellow colour. You'll also see that it's got this darker part at the top here which coincides with the blue food colouring because you can see that's made its way all the way up to the top of the paper. So this unknown food colouring therefore was a mixture of the yellow and the blue and we've separated those out. We can see it's absolutely nothing like the red at all because here's the red and actually this isn't a pure colour because you can see we've got a kind of purple at the bottom here making a very very distinctive dot and then at the top you've also got this kind of orangey mark. So the red food colouring wasn't pure but there was none of it in our green at all. Now the final thing that you will need to be able to do is calculate something called RF values and RF stands for retention factor and we said at the beginning of the video that the separation works because of the dye's um, affinity for either the mobile phase or the stationary phase. Obviously if the dye doesn't move very far it prefers the stationary phase where if it travels a long way up the paper, it's obviously very soluble and is being moving with the solvent or, or mobile phase. You need to be able to calculate an RF value, which is a measurement of how far the individual colours have travelled. And that's difficult to do on the chromatogram that I've made. So I'm just going to demonstrate that using this picture that I've got here. On this one, we can see we've got our origin. So this is the baseline which I drew on with a pencil, if you remember, and I'll just draw that on now. And you can see we've got a series of colour dots which have separated, and this is as far as the solvent has travelled. To calculate an RF value, the first measurement you need to take is the distance the solvent has travelled. So you measure from the baseline to the solvent front in millimetres. And this one is just over 10 centimetres, so that is 101 millimetres. To work out the RF value for the individual colours, we take the centre of the spot, so here I'm doing the yellow, and we calculate, oh sorry, we measure the distance the yellow has travelled, and again we do that in millimetres, and in this case that's 2 centimetres or 20 millimetres. The RF value is then calculated by the distance the colour has travelled, 20, divided by the distance that the solvent has travelled, 101 millimetres. You can do the same 
for your purple and your blue and get a separate measure of RF for each of your colours. So that one is 63, this one is 85.